Hey friends, Ash here with Sense, coming at you guys today with the tag video. 10, perfect 10 niche fragrances. I was tagged by Cam at Carolina Fragrance Reviews. Shout out to Cam. Link in the description of his channel. If you haven't checked it out, please make sure to do so. It's a great guy, one of my best friends in the entire community. So yeah, this video, 10 niche fragrances, basically that I love. Now, a lot of you out there are not going to agree with my choices, but these are essentially just some of my favorite niche fragrances. So for me, that's gonna be 10 out of 10. That's really the best way that I can go about doing this. So for one reason or another, each one of these fragrances is a fragrance that I love. And I'm gonna tell you guys why and give you a quick breakdown on each one of these. Don't want this video to run too terribly long. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Now I've got out of doing honorable mentions as this channel has gone along. Initially, each top 10 list, there were like two or three honorable mentions. I stopped doing that, but I'm gonna bring it back for this video. I wanna talk really quickly about a couple of fragrances that I love that maybe just barely didn't squeak in. First one is this one, Field Notes from Paris by Inica. This one has been a love of mine for a number of years. I actually first discovered this, I think, through Scent Trunk. Back when Scent Trunk sent you small little samples of random fragrances each month. It was actually pretty cool. They would send you three different niche or indie fragrances. You would kind of fill out a questionnaire and you would rate fragrances from like one to five stars. And then they would send you a semi-customized package each month that kind of went along with your tastes but they've stopped doing that. It was cool while it lasted. And that's where I discovered this one, bought it right away. So this one has coriander, beeswax, bergamot, cedar, and tobacco. It's got kind of a, a white tobacco. It's not really a super smoky tobacco. It's not a really syrupy tobacco. It's not a really heavy tobacco. This fragrance is more of a spring and fall time tobacco scent. It's got some sweetness from that beeswax, but it's not too heavy on the sweetness and it's got a good amount of fresh spiciness to it as well. This one's really, really comforting. I actually own two bottles of this fragrance. If it was ever discontinued, I'd pick up two or three more and just barely, barely, barely not in this list, but technically it kind of is in the list. And then the other one I want to talk about really quickly, African Leather by Mimo. I've talked about this a bunch of times and this one really could be in the list. I mean, honestly, it's a really, really easy to wear leather fragrance that focuses more on sweet spice than it does animalic leather. So you would see the name African leather or you might see the name African leather and you might think, oh, it's gonna be like, you know, a rhinoceros or something like that. This really, this pungent, heavy leather, but it's not. So there's cardamom and saffron in here and those are actually more prominent than the leather is. It's more a spicy fragrance than a leather fragrance, but the leather is noticeable. There's also cumin and vetiver in here, among other notes. Just super easy to wear, great nighttime fragrance, very sexy, very spicy, very sweet. All right, let's jump into the 10. Should say that these are not in any particular order, so it's not from 10 to one or anything like that. It's just 10 fragrances I love. First one to talk about, Creed Green Irish Tweed. Yeah, it's got iris, violet, ambergris, sandalwood, and of course, lemon verbena, and a good amount of it. Very green, very fresh, very sophisticated, very gentlemanly. It's a fragrance you can wear casually to the office. You can wear it formally. You can wear it on a date as well. You can wear this just about anywhere. I love green iris tweed. Came out in the 80s, but does not smell dated, at least not to me. And of course, it gets compared to fragrances like Davidoff, cool water which came out after green irish tweed kind of copied green irish tweed's homework made it cheaper more affordable more accessible but for me this one is the king this is the king of spring every time spring rolls around i reach for this one and wear the heck out of it i've got three or four bottles of the stuff and following along with another creed fragrance aventus yeah for me aventus is an easy 10 out of 10. I know that some people are not going to agree with that. They're gonna say that Aventus is overplayed, overhyped, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, this one is just a landmark fragrance. It changed everything. Look at how many different clones are out of this fragrance now. Everybody's trying to jump on the Aventus hype train. You've got uh, designer clones <laughs> or inspired by fragrances, if you wanna call them that. Mont Blanc Explorer, Perry Ellis America. There's gonna be more, I'm sure, in the next year or so that come out and 
smell a little bit similar to this one. It's got pineapple, birch, black currant, musk, bergamot, as uh, some of the notes in the fragrance. Of course, the ones that people cling on to the most are the pineapple and the birch. So if you have a fruity batch of Aventus, more pineapple, you got a smoky batch, more birch, and some of them nice and balanced. I'm not gonna get into too much batch talk. Actually, I'm gonna end the batch talk right there. <laughs> if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google after this video, Creed Aventus batch variations. Enjoy going down that rabbit hole. For me though, this one is an absolutely killer fragrance, extremely versatile, uh, very high quality. It's um, known as the king for a reason, and I tend to agree with that. I don't myself take the Aventus hype to the extreme, but I do think it's an awesome fragrance. After that, let's go with uh, this one, Sultan Vetiver by Nishane. I love, love this fragrance. I've talked about this before, but uh, I went up to Montreal with Manny from Cascade Scents, went into a store up there called Etiquette, smelled this in the store, and walked out with it. It's got some of the notes of the fragrance on the front of the bottle down here in the Roly, Tonka, Amberwood, Leather, and of course, Vetiver. This one has a bunch of different facets of Vetiver all rolled into one fragrance. So you've got some of the fresher facets of Vetiver, some of the darker facets, some dry facets, grassy facets, smokiness. You've got a lot going on in here. It is amazing in terms of the versatility. It's very modern smelling and very high quality. It's an extrait de parfum, so you're getting your money's worth here. It's got good longevity, good projection. As far as versatile vetiver fragrances go, this one's my favorite. This is the one that I'll choose to reach for more often than not. It just takes almost everything I love about vetiver, all the different ways it can be used and puts it into one bottle. Next up, a fragrance from the house of Amouage. And there are a few different fragrances from Amouage that could have made this list, but for me, it's gonna be my nearly empty bottle of Jubilation 25. It's got blackberry, resins, oud, and honey, along with some additional woods. Some of the notes in this fragrance, people most often will talk about this and say it's a fragrance that'll make you smell like a sultan. And I definitely get what people are talking about there. The blackberry gives you this dark, fruity sweetness, a little bit of a tang in there. The oud is prominent, but not fecal or animalic, so it's not gonna turn people away. It's got a good mass appeal to the fragrance, but it's definitely luxurious. The honey adds a little bit of an additional, almost slightly syrupy sweetness in there with the resins of which there are many. It's just a killer fall and wintertime fragrance, leaning more winter than fall, especially beginning of fall when it's really warm. Don't reach for it then. Amazing nighttime fragrance, great formal fragrance. It's uh, one that you need to smell if you're getting into niche fragrances. It's almost like one of those gateway fragrances <laughs> that leads you into niche because it has this wearability, as I mentioned, but it's much different than anything you're gonna find on the designer side of things. And from there, let's go with this one. Tower LDDM, L'Air du Désert Maracan. This one I bring up after the Amouage because this one also for me is one of those fragrances that's like a gateway niche and indie fragrance. It's one that you've got to smell at some point once you start getting into niche and indie scents. This one is really fragrance as art, fragrance as wearable art. It smells awesome. Now, some people are gonna say it's not really wearable, disagree a little bit on that for me. It's absolutely wearable, but if you're just starting to get into niche and indie fragrances and all you've worn or smelled is designer stuff, I could absolutely see you smelling this and being like, nope. Spices, woods, resins, all throughout this fragrance. It's supposed to smell like the warm air blowing in off the desert through a Moroccan spice market. Absolutely nails it. Amazing fragrance. If you've never smelled this, smell it. <laughs> I've talked about this before, but I made a big mistake years ago and sold my bottle. And then <laughs> like three weeks later, I bought it again. Sometimes you have to make a mistake and then you learn from it and you move on. So now I always have a bottle of this fragrance. One thing I will say about this fragrance is I don't wear it a huge amount out in public, not because it's um, not wearable in public. It's, it's not at all offensive. Not to me, but I do wear it a lot around the house just for myself. Let's go from that fragrance to this one. 
Ombre Sultan by Serge Dutton. This is one of the better amber fragrances that you're ever gonna smell. This one is just an amazing, amazing quality amber scent and uh, you can get it for a pretty good price all things considered a lot of times niche fragrances are crazy expensive but at discounters you can often find this for under 100 bucks it's got bay leaf sandalwood uh, coriander resins and of course amber some of the notes in the fragrance and i mean you can tell how this one rolls just by looking at the coloration can't you this one is really 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 good rich sweet amber great performance from this fragrance with interesting nuances that you won't often get in amber fragrances mainly coming from the bay leaf and the coriander fall time winter time night time that's the right time <laughs> for this fragrance that was stupid next up a fragrance from frederick mall just amazing scent musk ravageur this one obviously does have musk as one of the main notes i mean it's in the name of the fragrance but there is also a heavy dose of spice and vanilla cinnamon and clove are going to be the notes that you most likely pick up the most of it has this really interesting warming effect at least for me with the spiciness in the fragrance when you smell it it's just like this enveloping warmth from the spice the vanilla really comes out and is uh, really prominent but not in a, a cheap kind of bubblegum sort of way, which obviously if it did come across that way, that'd be pretty bad for Frederick Mall. Then it's got a great dose of muskiness in here as well. Some reviews that you'll read about this, we'll talk about it being hard to wear. Some of those are gonna be referencing back to the original formulation, which if you buy it now, you're not going to get <laughs> you have to really seek out the vintage uh, formulations this one is going to be more uh, centered on vanilla actually than it is musk though musk is obviously a big player amazing fragrance fantastic quality frederick mall musk ravageur after that we'll go to this one timbuktu from l'artisan parfumé this one one of my favorite from the house and this is a house that does get overlooked a lot um, i have maybe 11 or 12 from this house Timbuktu is gonna be my, my favorite overall if I had to pick just one. Incense, papyrus, uh, mango, and of course, vetiver. Some of the notes in the fragrance, vetiver being the most dominant note. Also a little bit of uh, myrrh in here, so you're gonna get a touch of that resinous sweetness. This one, a top of the line vetiver scent, much different from Sultan vetiver, whereas this one goes more modern, has kind of an effervescent vibe to it, that sparkly pop. Timbuktu, I don't wanna call it really rugged, but it just approaches things completely differently than a Sultan Vetiver does. You've got little hints of greenery in here from the papyrus, the incense lint, a bit of smokiness, the mango giving you kind of an exotic, slight fruity sweetness, just an amazing fragrance. Timbuktu, also one of the cheapest fragrances on this list. Oftentimes you can pick up these fragrances from discounters, 50 bucks. I've, I've seen them as low as in the 40s, especially for testers, though the pricing for this house does fluctuate a bit. So sometimes it's gonna be 80, 90, $100, and then you may check back three months after that, and the price has dropped 30, 40 bucks, or gone up 30, 40 bucks. It really fluctuates a lot for whatever reason. This is a house though, in general, to check out if you never have. I mean, go to Fragrantica, read up about the different fragrances, find some that you think are interesting and check them out, sample them because they have some absolute gems. Okay, this next one I'm cheating because it's two fragrances, but I didn't want to separate them. They're both from imaginary authors, Cape Heartache, Memoirs of a Trespasser. Notes are on the back. So Cape Heartache has Douglas fir, pine resin, Western hemlock, vanilla leaf, strawberry, old growth, and mountain fog. And then Memoirs of a Trespasser has Madagascar Vanilla, Gayak Wood, Myrrh, Bergamot, Benzoin, Ambrette Seeds, and Oak Barrels. I love Imaginary Authors, talked about it a bunch. These are my two absolute favorites as far as me wearing them. Now, A City on Fire, I love to smell, but I don't wear it anywhere near as much as these two. Cape Heartache is gonna give you a feeling of being in a coniferous forest, a dark forest, the hint of strawberry sweetness. And then this one, Memoirs of a Trespasser, just an amazing smelling, smoky vanilla fragrance with ambrette. God, it's so good. We've also got these nice dark colorations on the fragrance, letting you know right away that these are gonna be rich, deep fragrances, and they are. I love both of these. I love imaginary authors in general, but these two, some of the earlier releases from the house, oof, so good. And that's gonna bring me to the last one, and it's from Raja Parfums. 
scandal scandal pour homme i should say and uh this obviously is not the parfum cologne edition um, between the two I think this one's a little bit better, but the Parfum Cologne one is really nice as well. This one has lemon, lavender, bergamot, pedigree, and oak moss. And this is just a fantastic aromatic fougere. It's classic, it's masculine, sophisticated, gentlemanly, but at the same time still smells modern. It doesn't smell really super dated, but it does have that definite throwback to the barbershop mint fragrances of your of the past. The quality is very, 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 very high, as you would expect from the house. It just goes on so clean, so smooth. It has that nice green pop to it. It's uh, just an amazing fragrance. So on days where I'm wearing a button-up or going into the office and I wanna smell like I'm well put together on that particular day, Something like this does the trick. I love Scandal. And of the Parfum Cologne collection, Scandal probably is my favorite of the four, maybe creation-y, but um, if, it's not, if Scandal's not my absolute favorite, it's, it's tied. And this one, even better. So there we go, 10, 10 out of 10 niche fragrances. Technically 12, but who cares? And I guess I need to tag somebody. I'll tag, uh, and I don't even know if they've done this video. <laughs> I'm behind on my tags. I'll tag um, Josh at Scent Sense and Manny at Cascade Sense. There we go, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Sun is going down, so I'm gonna head back inside. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.